This presentation will be a good review of microscope parts and the use of microscope for you. Uh, this is stuff you should have learned in biology, but we're going to review it because we're going to be using microscopes a ton in pathology. You will be assessed on this knowledge and you will also need to display this knowledge in a lab practical scenario where you have to actually show me how you would properly use a microscope. This shows you all of the parts of the microscope as well as their names in case you have forgotten. One thing to keep in mind, the objective lenses on this particular presentation, it shows a microscope with three objective lenses. Some microscopes have more than three objective lenses. We will use some microscopes in our classroom that have four objective lenses. However, the highest power objective lens, which is also the longest objective lens, is what we call an oil immersion lens and we're not going to be using that in class we don't have the oil and they're very difficult to use properly without the proper training so it's not going to be necessary for us to use that fourth objective lens so for the most part we're going to stick with the low power medium power and high power objective lenses you'll also see on this microscope that there are stage clips it is not always necessary to utilize stage clips and some stage clips might actually not look exactly as they do on this particular microscope, but this is a good basic representation of the parts of the microscope. It is important to remember that when you carry a microscope, you're gonna pick it up by the arm and the base just to make sure that you know it's a little bit more stable. You don't ever wanna pick it up by the eyepiece because the eyepiece is actually removable and it is likely that if you pick it up by the eyepiece, the eyepiece will detach from the rest of the microscope and then the microscope will crash to the ground and that's never good. In order to calculate the total power of the specimen that you're looking at under the microscope, um, the power is basically how much larger the image is than it is to the naked eye. You're gonna take two numbers and multiply them the ocular lens has a certain magnification to it. 10x is the default magnification. It's the standard magnification for ocular lenses. However, you're going to want to double check the lenses to make sure they're labeled with 10x. I believe every single one of our particular microscopes is 10x, but just double check to make sure. You're going to take that magnification on the ocular lens and you're going to multiply it by what you find on the objective lens. Notice it is not the decimal number. Do not worry about the decimal number. You only need to worry about the whole number on the objective lens. So when you multiply those two together, that's gonna to tell you the total magnification of the image that you're looking at. So in this particular instance, if these were the two lenses on the microscope you were utilizing, the total magnification would be 400X, which basically means the image you see through the microscope is 400 times larger than what you see to the naked eye. Once you increase the powers of magnification, for example, going from the lowest objective lens to the medium objective lens, what you're going to notice is that you should see a lot more detail, but you're not going to see as much of the image, as much area. We say that this is the smaller field of view. The field of view is defined as how much of the image you can see through the microscope. So as you can see on this particular example with the bald eagle at 7x, which would be a, like a low power situation, you can see the entire face of the bald eagle and even the sky behind it. But once you change it to the next highest power, which in this case would be 10x, you could only see the beak and the eyes and a few feathers, but you can see a lot more details about what the bird actually looks like. So if you look at that picture on the bottom, you can see on the left-hand side, if you take a look at that, you're seeing a ton of the image. You're seeing a lot of area, but you're not seeing a whole lot of detail. On the right-hand side, you're seeing a lot more detail, but you're not seeing as much of the area. So the left-hand side would be the lower power, the right-hand side would be the higher power of magnification. Focusing a microscope, it's really important that you follow the steps every single time you focus a microscope. This is going to help you reduce the possibility of breaking slides and breaking the microscope, reduce the possibility of the objective lens actually touching the specimen that you're looking at, which could possibly ruin the objective lens and could harm the specimen if you're looking at living things. So the first thing you're going to do is make sure that the objective lens uh, it has the low power in use. That's gonna be the shortest lens on the microscope. Uh, in our microscopes, I believe, generally they are 4X power objective lenses. Once you've got the objective lens on low power, you're gonna place the slide on the stage 
and you can use the stage clips to hold the slide in place if you want to. Generally, we don't do that as much because once you've clipped it, it's harder to move around. So I would maybe say don't use the stage clips until you have the slide in a good spot where you're gonna actually view the specimen and study the specimen for a longer period of time. Once you've got the slide on the stage, you can focus the specimen using the course adjustment knob. The course adjustment knob, if you remember, is the larger of the two knobs for focusing. So you're gonna use that first. Once you have the specimen uh, focused with the course adjustment knob, you're gonna refine the focus, make slight adjustments using the fine adjustment knob. And the fine adjustment knob is not gonna do a whole lot for you. You don't wanna start with the fine adjustment knob. You're going to then rotate the objective lens to the next highest power. Notice you do not jump from low power directly to high power. You always wanna stop in the middle. If you jump from low power to high power, you're going to find that it's going to be very difficult to focus it on high power and get your image as you want it to be. So instead of jumping from low to high, we're not gonna do that. We are going to go from low power to medium power. Once you get it to medium power, you're going to go ahead and refine your focus again using only the fine adjustment knob. Notice we did not use the coarse adjustment knob. If you use the coarse adjustment knob appropriately on the low power, it shouldn't be necessary to use it again on the medium power. You should only have to make slight adjustments once you get beyond low power. Then once you've got it in focus on medium power, you can choose to stop depending on the specimen you're looking at or you might need to rotate it to the next highest power. For our microscopes, that's gonna be the third objective lens, which is the highest power you're going to be using. At this time, you have to be a little careful and watch this from the side as you're rotating it. The objective lens that's the highest is going to be the longest lens as well. So you wanna make sure that it's not going to break the slide. The high power objective lenses do have some springs in them, so they do have a little bit of give but you don't wanna force it too much because then you have the possibility of breaking the slide and or the lens itself. So you wanna be careful with this one. If you get it to the high power and you are able to use the high power, again, we're gonna refine the focus using only the fine adjustment knob. Do not use the coarse adjustment knob because that's gonna make bigger adjustments and you could break the slide. So only use the fine adjustment knob for the highest power. So a couple of reminders, the course adjustment knob is used only with low power. Remember, that's gonna get you the major focus going. The fine adjustment knob is going to make slight adjustments. If you cannot find it on low power using the course adjustment knob, you are not going to be able to focus it on medium power or high power. A lot of times your instinct is to say, well, I can't see anything on low power, so I'm gonna go ahead and try the next one. Don't do that because it's going to be even harder for you to find something once you go to the medium power because now you have a smaller field of view. So make sure that when you're focusing, you only use the course adjustment on low power and you find something on low power to focus on before you move to medium power. Again, you should always start by focusing on low power and find something on low power, then go ahead and work your way up. Here's a list of the functions for every part of the microscope. So you can see the various things that these parts are supposed to do. One thing to keep in mind with the fine adjustment knob and the coarse adjustment knob, the way they focus the image is by moving the stage up and down. The coarse adjustment knob makes more drastic changes and drastic movements of the stage. The fine adjustment knob is only gonna slightly move the stage. So make sure you're aware of that situation. The other thing to keep in mind, a really important piece of the microscope that often gets forgotten about is the diaphragm. The diaphragm is located underneath the stage. The job of the diaphragm is to regulate the amount of light that gets through to the specimen. So for lighter things, things that are lighter in color, you're gonna wanna go ahead and make sure the diaphragm isn't allowing too much light through. For things that are a little bit darker, things that are a little bit thicker, you're gonna wanna make sure and open up the diaphragm to make sure it's letting more light through. So a lot of times if you're having trouble focusing on something, it could be because perhaps the specimen is actually too light and you wanna make sure that you adjust the diaphragm accordingly. This piece of the microscope or this part of the microscope is often forgotten about in terms of how to adjust the image and make the image focused. So make sure that you keep that in mind. It is a really useful tool. That concludes our presentation on microscopes and our review of microscopes. And hopefully most of this stuff should be familiar for biology. If not, watch the presentation a couple times, take some notes, 
and you can complete the lab about using microscopes and creating slides.